Hello guys and welcome back to The Sim. Now in this episode, I'm not going to do any building really. Well that's not the plan. The plan is to get the displays working and get some of the avionics refitted and working so I can use The Sim. This meant digging out this very old oh, computer and this will power us all the monitors at the front and we'll talk about going through how we're going to network it later on. But for the time being, I really need to power this up, get it connected to the monitors and make sure it still works. This computer has not run in two or three years. It's been stuck in the corner gathering dust, as you probably can see by the terrible state inside. The computer is nice and clean, or as clean as it's going to get. Let's head around the front of the sim and start connecting it all up and hope it all works. This is my secondary computer and its sole basis in life is just to run the monitors at the back of the sim here. And they're the ones in the MIP and the lower centre console. So hopefully this is a close up of the MIP computer. I've put it in the first officer footwell at the moment just for ease of use. You can see that the two graphics cards fitted, one here and one here. They're very old graphics cards, they're nothing special, but they do have a lot of monitor outputs. I think each one's got four outputs. So the top one, which I think is a GTX 960, is feeding the MIP monitors, all four of them. First officer's captain's middle or upper ECAS and lower ECAS. This little one down here is for the captain's FMC and that means I've got room to add on for the first officer's FMC and also the instructor station. And up here for the MIP computer, the only other connections we have are the ethernet connection here, which goes off to the other computer that runs ProSim and P3D. Moving up even further, just got the keyboard, the mouse, and this USB, the white one, is for the FMC keyboard. When it came to fitting the monitors, there's about seven monitors, all with the 12 volt power supplies here. Rather than use one of them, I'm going to use one of the 12 volt 30 amp power packs. That means I need a dedicated breakout board, and that's what I'm going to build now on the side here. I was going to put it on the inside where the MIP is, but I really do want it to be quite easily accessible. And you see it's got various holes in, the buzz bar will go in here, and then the gauges through these two holes here. That should mount there, with the 12 and 5 volt power supplies being mounted underneath, and that way we'll have full access to it. Nice and easy for maintenance. So I'll attach this now to this backboard and start wiring up the 12 and 5 volt <coughs> the 12 and 5 volt power supplies so this is the last 12 volt monitor cable and I'm just going to run it in and then do a bit of wire management and tidy it all up out to the breakout box on the outside and then wire it up to the power supply. With the 12 volt system done it was now time to move on to the 5 volt system repeating the exact same process. Here is the finished article with the power supply as you can see the top section is 12 volts DC and the bottom section 5 volts. The 5 volts feeds the USB power, all the power supplies like the 10 port USB, the 5 port USB powers inside and the accessories are things like the Arduinos, the servos and the 7 segment displays. Upstairs on the 12 volt supply the first one is running the monitors and we're down to just under 1 amp pulling all the monitors on now. The second one, we've got no backlighting working at the moment, but that will supply the backlighting. And the third one will be any accessories like the dome lights or internal cockpit lighting that doesn't come off the ProSim software. 
That's this part complete. Let's move on to the next part. Here you can see we've got five Arduinos fitted for the MIP and Glare Shield assembly. Number one, number two, number three, they control all the components on the MIP, including the LEDs, the switches, and the seven segment displays, including the servos. This one here is for the, the MCP. This one here is for the captain's EFIS, and there'll be one more for the first officer EFIS. Here we have my MCP and captain's EFIS. Now, one of the major design flaws in my behalf was that they go into the same boards, which means if I want to change one, just pop it out, I can't do that. And that's not very good. The first job is to split the boards and have a detachable connector that allows me to take one unit out at a time, even though they're sharing the same Arduino board. And they, the MCP and EFIS were designed to fit like so. So, we'll head on outside the sim, get these bolted down and wired up correctly. So I've split the MCP Arduino down, it's wiring loom. These were the cables, these brown cables, the switches, they're rotary switches in fact, that's what my colour means. And the red and purple I know means encoder. So they're supposed to go to another Arduino because you can't fit more than 52 inputs on an Arduino and the MCP requires more than that. So it's a shared board and that's where I need the extra connector. Well, I bought these connectors cheap off eBay and as you've probably just seen me struggle for the last couple of minutes, I was trying to get the, the bolt and the nut tightened and for some reason they just wouldn't go. And that's because there is no thread at all in the nut. Now that that's the left hand EFIS sorted on the Arduino board, I'm now going to fit the spare Arduino board here for the right hand side the first officer just so it's there I don't have to take the window assembly off again to get to it I can just take the glare shield off I've tidied all the wiring up it's all laid out all I need to do for the next step is daisy chain the grounds to each of the boards so all the boards are connected ground wise together let me do that now and I've just got simple shorten links to fit in the boards and that's the sole purpose of these quick release connectors so a board can be removed or replaced as required. I think that's everything connected, it's almost all ready to go. We just need the USB hub. So before I had this fitted just like so. Yes, self sticky tape. I'm gonna call it an end to this episode. That's two days of solid filming and working all complete. I believe that's the MIP overhead all ready to go. Just got to apply power and start programming tomorrow. I'll leave you with a few closing shots. Until tomorrow, sim out.